Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh. Many of you guys know this year's Flight Fest was probably the most epic year for crazy huge projects, but one project really took the cake and that was Ben Harbour's project of making a monster B-52 fly. Now the really cool thing about that is we actually sponsored this build and Ben designed it ahead of time. He met us there, we gave electronics and a pre-cut foam. He built it with an amazing group of people and in just a matter of a couple days, he put this big monster in the air and had an epic time. <laughs> So the good news is, is Ben has already flown this. He put many epic flights on some of the most beautiful sunsets, inspired a ton of people, but he wasn't able to take it back to California, so we got it right here. So first of all, Ben, huge thank you. Not only did you inspire tons of people, but there is no way we're gonna let this sit and go away. We gotta use this to inspire many more people through our channel here. The bad news is, this thing didn't store very well. We had it in a hot barn for a few weeks. The weather got to it, the heat got to it. It's a little saggy, a little tired. But what we're gonna do over the next couple days is we're gonna bring it back. We're gonna put an epic paint job on it. We're gonna go ahead and check all the connections, all the servos. There's eight motors on this thing. We're gonna make sure it's all running good. Once we got everything figured out, we're gonna take it out to Edgewater. We're gonna put it up in the air and hopefully we have as epic of a flight as you did at Flight Fest. <laughs> ben Harbors, this is uh, his first community release that we released uh, one of his designs. So we have the little tiny FT commuter available at the store. And we also have the B-52. And if you look here, it's not even the size of the rudder. <laughs> one thing I love that Ben did is he actually worked with different people. They designed 3D printed trucks. So the B-52 doesn't have a conventional landing gear. It has these trucks and they'll actually turn it. So instead of like the nose gear turning and everything following, they literally have independent control. So even when this thing lands in a crosswind, it'll actually track straight down the runway. And look how it even has a little bit of slop in it too, so it can cantilever. Yeah. Knowing Ben, he's an architect. I guarantee he designed it that way. Yeah. Here's another really cool thing Ben did too. Like rather than having 100 rubber bands holding this thing on. He has some carbon fiber reinforced booms on the bottom. And then he went ahead and he made these straps. So when the wind goes on, he basically pulls this down, cinches it as tight as possible, and then Velcros it on. And then the whole thing stays on here. I'm kind of wondering is if we fly this crazy like we typically do, whether that's gonna hold out or not. But I was pulling on this real hard doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Best part about all this is this is all kept true to vision. All these are common materials. This is just normal extreme packing tape. This is Velcro you can get at the craft store. These are popsicle sticks you can also get at the craft store. And these carbon fiber tubes are readily available. You can even get arrow shafts from your local like hunting shop and cut them up and use them. What we're doing is we're just going to every control surface here. We always have a thing saying check your crap. It's control surfaces, rips and tears, angles and power system. And all I'm doing is I'm just moving everything up and down. I'm checking all the control horns on each side, the linkages, making sure nothing's loose, no servos are loose, and there's no warp to maybe the control surfaces where it's fighting me. And that's gonna be a big issue we're gonna have to address on the wing here, just because kind of the wing's kind of turned up. But once we're done with this, I'm gonna scuff this up with some triple lot steel wool. We can put a base of uh, color on it and let it dry while we work on the wing. So Josh is gonna literally check out that wing, check out the carbon fiber rod, make sure that it's able to fly a huge, long fuselage. In the meantime, we're gonna take this huge, long fuselage, and my buddy Matt and I, hello, we're gonna take this out, we're gonna paint this sucker, with as much of this stuff as we possibly can until we run out of this stuff. So we're gonna take it outside and we're gonna get happy. Jeez, I thought uh, it was hot. <laughs> all I did was just lift it up, man. This thing was plenty strong and flew great when Ben was flying in here, but our concern is it sat in a bunch of heat and over time, you know, glue joints can get weakened up, tape can kind of get brittle. It's just a good idea to go through the whole thing. I'm gonna break these wings apart into two separate pieces. I'm gonna go through every single joint from control surfaces to where the panels are met up and anything I find like this here that's loose, 
I'm gonna go ahead and reinforce and glue. And then also I'm gonna check out the motors. Once we're done with that, it's out the paint. So I think what happened is as time went on and the heat got to this, all the hot glue kind of started softening up and then the weight of the wings kind of sitting to the outside just pulled it apart. I'm gonna make an incision here, open the wings, open this crack here, pump it full of glue, put it in, jig it up, new tape, we're done. All right, so the middle of the wing's all glued up. That's nice and strong here. Overall, it's amazing how well this fared, especially in the hot weather. This back end here kind of curled up a little bit, but I'm not as worried about that as I once was. Biggest thing we want to see is that this is nice and straight, so there's no binding on the controls, and there's absolutely none. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure that there's no glue that seems broken. It's ready for paint. Nice. So with the motors here, this is really ingenious what they did. These are not EDFs. I guess you'd almost call this electric ducted prop. Kind of like what we did in the early version of the uh, A10 Warthog episode where we put motors. In this case, Ben took a, uh, a multi-rotor, a uh, quad prop, specifically our 1700 KV radial motor for race quads. And he went ahead and put a four inch prop and then 3D printed a housing so it gets all the efficiency. One other thing that we really lost on our uh, on our a10 when we made the props inside the ducts is we didn't have the close tolerance and we lost a tremendous amount of efficiency but also the air was never smoothed out at the back end uh, Ben did both of that with his little 3d pot here the only thing I got to adjust here is just make sure that this is strong enough that when it's pulling forward it's not gonna start harmonically wobbling back and forth I think to do that I'm just gonna use a couple conveniently placed skewers and call it a day. Really cool thing about the B-52 is it's pretty simple. Uh, it's a big gray airplane with a couple simple stripes, a couple of simple markings on the side, and of course our windows. So a really easy way to make paint stick well to our water resistant foam board is to just simply get some 30-aught steel wool and then sand it down. And just like you're kind of scuffing up the surface, put down one light coat of paint, let it dry thoroughly. From that point on, when you put additional coats of paint, everything is gonna grip really well. So we got the elevator and the rudder working. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to tie in all four of these motors on each side. There's eight motors total, so we have four on each side. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm not gonna do differential thrust on this big guy. I'm just gonna go ahead and fly conventionally because we have a huge rudder. So each one of these here are gonna have a Y harness and then I'm gonna Y harness these together. Total, we're gonna have a total of five Y harnesses to take all eight motors <laughs> and put them to one channel. I guess technically we probably could do differential, but I don't think we're gonna do a flat spin. Every time I get differential and something magical happens and I'm flying, I always say the infamous words, let's do a flat spin. I don't want to do a flat spin with them. Historically, I think the B-52s had an issue where the tail could crack off. If they got too aggressive on the rudder, they could actually fatigue the whole rudder and it would crack off in mid-flight. And if I'm not mistaken, I think it was a B-52 that was flying and either got in a storm or something, but the whole tail I've cracked off that. and they flew it home without a tail. But long story short, it flew without a tail. So how crazy is that? It's reassuring. That sounds like a future episode is to cut the tail off of this and see how it flies, right? So this takes six cell. We're gonna use the Lumineer 8000 milliamp. Right here. All right, ready? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> uh, is it blowing air? Yeah. All right. We're gonna do the same thing the other wing. We can't put this together and get out the door, so we're gonna go ahead and finish this off, take it outside, put it together, and fly. We haven't mentioned it yet, Ben Harbour just released his video on the whole build journey. We're gonna have that link below. Make sure you check it out, because then you get to see all the great faces and people that did this, and also how quickly and how wonderful it was built. I'm not gonna lie, everything else we've built before, so we know if worst case scenario, we can rebuild it. Now we do, we did do all the cutting and, and cut the pieces out, but I didn't build this. So we can't really fix it that easy like we could other planes because we, we didn't build this one. So uh, we'll see how it goes. I think it's gonna go awesome. I actually got to chase this at Flight Fest and it flew amazing. So if it flies just like it did before and Josh is a pretty good pilot, then it's gonna be awesome. Well, there's two things. The the wings have a little bit of uh, albatross, yeah, wobble wobble, and I'm actually super concerned because there's a lot of flex in the wing. As you can see, it's been bending in multiple different areas and I just don't fully trust it. So, so beyond that, we haven't even tested the wing. It's a huge fuselage, it's a huge wing, there's a lot of weight, there's a massive battery. It could literally just break in midair. 
Other than that, I feel really good. I'm giving it a 85.7% chance of flying. Pretty good. That's pretty yep. good. That's what pretty about good. landing? <laughs> I didn't, we had, we didn't, he didn't ask me that. He didn't ask me that. All right. You can land anything once. I'm not gonna, you know what I'm gonna try to do? I'm gonna try to keep this as slow as possible because I think speed is gonna be what kills it. If it dies, oh, it's gonna be because of speed. I like that, I like that. We'll fly the wing, not the motors. All right, you ready to do this, j no, But yeah, let's do it. <laughs> no. All right, so here's the thing. This buff is about to take to the blue yonder like you've never seen before. But before we do, I wanna please ask all of you out there to consider subscribing. We noticed a lot of you guys actually aren't subscribed to our channel, so that's awesome because there's a lot of new flight testers out there, and we'd like you guys to officially join the family. So consider hitting that little button down there that says subscribe. It helps us out a ton, and it helps us do crazy projects like this for you guys so we can do more of them. So hit that button, and let's go fly. Come on. All right, here we go. Take one. Let's go. Coming at us! Get in the air! Get in the air! Woo! Yes! Oh, it's a little wobbly. Oh, it's falling off. You don't need a top, right? Oh, that's full oh. throttle. That's full throttle? Oh <laughs> my. Oh, don't go Wait, behind this, the trees. This is way more sketchy. Don't go behind the trees. Well, I got I can't, you. You can't see. That rudder is doing nothing for <laughs> me. No, no. So you can't oh see this right goodness. now. Everybody heads up. Oh, you're good, dude. You're great. You look great. Look, he's flying. You're, you're flying it, it dude. <laughs> How are we gonna get it down? <laughs> okay, that looks like it came over. That looks like a real B-52 flying over that the car. That is awesome. That's so sick. Jerry, All right. I, I think we got a warp in the wing or something. But well, if you look at the wing, it, it's definitely flexing quite a bit. Okay, right. I see you. All right, we got a little more altitude this time. That's great. So what altitude we're is definitely here, our friend. I'm not lying here. I'm just gonna try to get it Come over on. these trees. <laughs> if it are, you breaks, gonna, are you coming in for approach? I'm gonna go down a little farther. Yeah, yeah take get a her, long approach. Get her down. Long approach. Yeah, I like the long. I mean, this isn't a park flyer. This is a B-52. <laughs> what are the neighbors thinking now? Oh, just don't. They're like, pull there goes up the too neighborhood. Fast. Oh yes, look yes. Come on, Jeff. Oh yeah. Oh jeez, oh, man. Oh. Oh, oh, look at you coming in like a boss. Yeah! Get yes. down the hill! See you later! Gotcha. <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah. You're happier than Andrew! <laughs> Look at it, dude! Look at that! Oh my god! My god. Just, that might have been the my... sketchiest flight. I didn't think it was going to be sketchy at all. I figured the wing was going to fall. Yeah. Oh, you she... came around the corner oh, and it was like, instead of this, it was like this. Uh, See, the, yeah. In the air, it was just like, <laughs> just like a big bird. It was just flapping. <laughs> so, so I don't know if the ESCs weren't calibrated or not, or I think honestly what it was, was we painted this in the hot sun. And during that time, all the fixes we made the day before came undone. Yep. So okay. we had to basically do some field hacks, which was like basically gaff tape. Yeah. And I think what happened is one wing was producing more lift than the other wing, and when one wing's doing that, it's acting as ailerons. That's why yeah. ailerons do this. She was not turning for me. <laughs> <laughs> differential from this point moving on, differential goes on everything. <laughs> Love it. Are coconut. Love so, it. Ben, thank you so much for dreaming big, doing big, and also bringing people along for the journey. This episode would not be possible without you. And guys, like we mentioned before, Ben actually did a whole episode about this with his build journey at Flight Fest. So check that here. Hit that subscribe bell so we can share our content with you and you know whenever new content comes out. And also, we love hearing your feedback. Let us know in the comments what you want us to do with it next. Maybe we drop something, maybe we fly, I don't know. We'll I'd see. say flying it a second time would be crazy. Yes, <laughs> Fair enough. In the pit of morning, I got a scarf off the bus. <laughs> it must be Hey.